Lisa, Lisa. I'd be Lisa. happy to. Yeah. All right. I love our country. Okay. I pledge allegiance. We're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Hold on. Oh, sorry. We're going to do the Pledge of Take off your hat. Uh, yeah. no. Thank you. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, and welcome to the April 9, 2019 Master Plan Implementation Committee meeting. Um, and we're going to modify the, uh, the, <clears throat> the agenda somewhat. What I'd like to start out with, if it's, if it's okay with you, is go directly to the uh, number of, of items that are on the town warrant that oh, require, sorry, that, may, uh, that may require our, uh, shall we say, our position, mm -hmm. approval, disapproval, most, there's just a few. Yeah. And just me give you some guidance on the items that have to do with when there's a petition made by citizens but there's one having to do with we don't like where you're going to put the quirk for the uh, um, for the new sewer. Mm -hmm. So there's, there are petitions like that. There are petitions maybe having to do with um, how to, which particular building and how much should be spent on a senior center. Mm -hmm. we, we don't touch those because those are specific policy issues mm -hmm. that are decided by the board of selectmen and others. Mm -hmm. We're just interested in promoting and guiding the, the master plan, and those topics are already in, in flight, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so the, the, the first one has to do, believe it or not, with the water department. If you've looked at the, the warrant, uh, all, all I'm asking for here is a vote of approval that we support the water department's effort to basically uh, put a, shall we say, restriction zoning addition on to a portion of the common in view of the fact that there is an issue having to do with protecting the water supply. I absolutely support that. Okay. Yeah, what, what area? It's, it's at the very tip, just as you come up above the hill, onto uh, King Street. And it does encroach into the, into the, the common property. But if you have the trade-off between protecting our water supply and, and commercial development, without water, people don't make out too well. So. Yeah, that's that's a reasonable and, and to give you even more reinforcement. If you look at the um, uh, master plan, the master plan is rather specific in two places. It says this is one of the major things the town wants to preserve and protect. That's the water supply. Absolutely. Yeah. So if if you give me the OK, I will be very happy if it's necessary to indicate that we support the water department's position on this. Can, can if you guys if you can give me a minute I can bring up the actual warrant so okay. that we can when we make a motion we refer yes, accurately please. to the articles. So why don't, while while I'm doing that because it could take me a couple minutes why don't you go on to the next one? Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and the next one has to do with there's two at least soaring uh, oh, yeah. warrant and, and both of the one of them involves uh, funds to these, I believe it's $1.5 million, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the second one involves getting the state to provide a charter, uh, basically so that we can form a sewering district, which then in turn makes us eligible for certain kinds of state, and I'll say it in a low voice because I don't think it's any going to be there, federal support <laughs> for installing the, the sewer. Yeah. And just to give you, give you some idea that the total cost of the sewer is going to be somewhere in the vicinity of between 27 to 31 million, and so that means a borrowing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let, let me understand. We, uh, and, we, and we have supported, as part of the master plan's uh, directive, uh, we are supporting uh, the install of the sewer, that, that the town wants to have a sewer, and these are the necessary preliminaries for the sewer. Yes, yeah, so we voted in the fall on the study. No, we voted in the fall for a design for it. Well, that's what I meant. Yes. Study. Okay, the design means they're actually going to yeah. specify where the various mm -hmm. parts go. It's an engineering. Uh -huh. Yeah, design. that's what I Okay, yeah. and the reason, and then it was thought that we would vote on the the sewer as a whole in the spring, but that study isn't, that design phase no. isn't completed yet? That's not the reason. Oh. The reason is, is the, the two one I try to give you, or that's in there, one is a sewering district has to be established oh. in, in order, order for this to go yeah. forward. Yeah, is that correct? In order, so just for my clarification, mm -hmm. 
we wouldn't be able to easily get grant money or funding without it being a determined district? That is correct. Okay. And also, it has to go back to, it has to get approval of the legislature, uh, the a, frankly, the AG's office, to make sure that we are, you know, that it's a real bona fide district. So those are the two, it's the sewery mm -hmm. and the water, are, are the two major ones on the list. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a third one. Okay, what, what, oh, sorry, what, so, I've, so I, got, I have the articles up here. Okay. So the first one you're talking about was, is number 17, Zoning Amendment, Aquifier and Water Resource District? Yes. Okay. So why don't we go ahead and take a motion and then Agreed. we can discuss and vote on that one and then we'll circle back to the sewer and then go to the third one you want to talk about. Okay. So I'll make a motion that the Master Plan Implementation Committee support Article 17, Zoning Amendment, Aquifier and Water Resource District. Second. Here is second. Mm -hmm. All those, any further discussion? Okay, so the basic thing of the the the, the warrant or the article is to extend the district. Is that the point? Okay. All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. All right, and then uh, I think the two are in the sewer. Yeah. yeah. So you talk about the home rule petition yes. twenty one home rule petition for special state legislation to authorize right. the Littleton Common Smart Sewer. Yeah. Right, so I make a motion that the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Support Article 21, the Home Rule Petition for Special State Legislation to Authorize Littleton Common Smart Sewer. Second. Any further discussion? No. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And I believe that there's a, there's a second one of the sewer. Uh, the established Littleton Common Smart Sewer Enterprise Fund? Yes. Okay. So um, I make a motion that the Master Plan Implementation Committee support Article 22, the establishment of a Littleton Commons Smart Sewer Enterprise Fund. Second. All those in favor? It, well, can we have a modicum of discussion? Of course. Michael, you like to no, no, come because, quickly, and I appreciate that. No, the, I'm sorry. Please. I'm, I'm, is that, does that then become something like the funds that we have that the light district or the electric district and the water district have? Basically. It, it's almost the same, but at the moment, it basically provides a specific, shall we say, mechanism and agency for the town to obtain, shall we say, grants in aid uh -huh. that may or may not carry with it a loan mm -hmm. and both. Mm -hmm. So in other words, there's a financial entity that basically the town creates specifically for this. Mm -hmm. And it gives comfort to those who provide the funds to know it's not going to, let's say, the latest baseball team or something like that. Okay. So this is basically a way to define... Something separated it. from the town general fund. And well, not separated from it. just says what the purpose would be. So in other words, it doesn't go drifting off into mm -hmm. to other mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. More positively, it, it signals to funding agencies that we're serious and want to proceed in this direction. Yeah. So if there's no further discussion, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, very good. Okay, so that takes that takes care of the major one. The, the, the last one, um, and I, uh, this one is, this one has more of a policy okay. associated with it, so I don't necessarily think we have to vote on it, I just want you to be aware of it. There is, as you know, the Board of Selectmen, in accordance, by the way, with the master plan, said, recommended and established an affordable housing trust. This recognizes that, if, if you read the literature, this recognizes the fact that we do not have diversified housing in this town. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can't afford to be here, live here, can't afford to buy, mm -hmm. including folks who work for the town and the elderly. So it's both the very young and some of the oldest me members are having difficulty finding housing. So this is a one way in which to get affordable housing hopefully in place. Mm -hmm. So the mechanism chosen basically is to use CPA funds which would flow into, it's about a half million dollars that's located in that fund It would go into the Affordable Housing Trust and the, then that trust once established, the Board of Trustees of that trust then would begin using that funds hopefully judiciously to promote and to establish diversified housing. Mm -hmm. Now, at the moment, at the moment, that affordable housing trust group is still putting together how it works, its mechanisms, and approach. And uh, very late this afternoon, 
I got from the one of the co-chairs, uh, City of Napoli, who happens to be a selectman, a uh, select person, uh, the latest iteration of a slide presentation that she uses with the Board of Selectmen and others to explain what the Affordable Housing Trust is and why we have it. The mechanisms in there, there's no mechanisms. And by mechanisms, I mean policies and programs, criteria, who, who qualifies, who doesn't, that's going to be their purview. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, the only thing that's being voted for in town is the movement of the money, the, simply the movement of money from one place into the trust. However, there's no authorization yet for the trust to spend any money because they haven't decided what is going to be their guide. Okay. So there's no reason for us to weigh in because the Affordable Housing Trust is part of one of the major recommendations of the master plan. I'm just advising you where we are. Okay. So we think we've already we've already favored it or something like that? Yeah, it's, it's by definition, since it's in the master plan, one of the major things this committee can't say, no, we don't want to do it. it, it we, we, as individuals, can talk all we want to at the appropriate time and place about the mechanism and about the wisdom of moving that and all the rest, but that's not our purview, not yet. Okay, and was it my understanding that also new housing that would be built under some conditions would either have to build affordable housing or they could also contribute money to this that trust? Is, is that, that's, is that's, that's, one of the, that's, that's one of the ways that affordable housing trusts operate. Huh. So that if you don't do it or you don't do it up to a certain level as a developer, you, take, you basically pay a certain amount of money into the trust, a certain fraction of shall we say, it's a, it's a ratio, and that, again, that's something the Housing Trust has to come up with. Yeah. Okay. So, even though that money being transferred is a half million dollars, I don't think it takes much figuring out to realize that half million dollars in this market for housing, for housing particularly for construction, doesn't go very far. Yeah. So there are proposals that the Affordable Housing Trust is using, such as housing vouchers. Now, they haven't announced this, just give you a flavor of what they're trying to deal with. A voucher would mean that, obviously, if you met certain means test and your housing situation needed to be addressed, if you met that, met those two criteria, you'd be given n number of dollars and not be kicked out of where you're living. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a lot to deal with, and it's going to take them a while, I think, to come up with a formula. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so those are the, the major items that, that <coughs> require our discussion and involvement. And thank you very much for, for, for taking a look. Now, let, let me move on now to the next uh, subject, which the liaison effort that you made with the Affordable Housing Trust, and then second, what you learned from working, attending, listening to what went on at the Economic Development Committee, which we all know <clears throat> is one of the one of the folks set of folks who have to address revenues for the town. So let's start off with the Affordable Housing Trust. Uh, yep. So Anna and I attended that, <clears throat> um, and actually at both meetings, Cindy and Napoli had put together really a wonderful um, presentation mm -hmm. with handouts to go along with the slides. So we have that. Um, so thorough and thought through and what the demographics of Littleton are, who yep. can live here, who has a very difficult time living here, who we have more of, who we have less of, and certainly everything in our master plan points toward helping those, are, those who are more disadvantaged to be able to live in town. Um, so everything's leading in the right direction for both groups to make that uh, happen. Um, so it, it's available, it can be studied. Um, I could recount more if we want to hear more, but it was certainly a very useful and thorough presentation on who lives in Littleton and why, who doesn't and why not. Uh, it was uh, a good meeting to attend, and I heard it twice because uh, Cindy presented it both. Um, I guess I'll roll through, and then if we want to loop back and ask any questions, I can do that. The Economic Development Committee, um, I, 
seemed like it was going to be all about that. And after an hour or more, mm -hmm. um, I was invited to come from the chairs up to join them at the table. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, great. Uh, welcome. And uh, reconstructing the evening, it was interesting because uh, Delisa asked me what my uh, opinion was of the sewer. And I had to say, is that my opinion or <laughs> the Master sure. Transportation Committee's committee, uh, opinion? Ended up ended up being a little of both. Uh, crux of it, without a town sewer, there is no master plan for revitalizing the common area. So that has to happen if mm -hmm. it's going to move in that direction. So, I mean, again, I can elaborate, but without it, there's really little point right. in continuing. Um, I will say and share, and I guess that meeting was recorded as sure. is this one, but uh, in attendance were not only Cindy but also Chuck DeCoe, so a couple of selectmen, and then Ivan Pagasik, so water department, and I don't know how these things work, but Ivan mentioned that water department has not really been invited to attend any of the hearings, processes, discussions about the sewer, and that seems a shortfall that should be addressed, but obviously not by me. Uh, can I j just make sure uh, I attend the uh, the, the sewer sewering task force yeah. as part of my role, and I can assure you that there is someone from the water department at every meeting at, and collect, not only participating, but actually contributing and contributing mightily. Could to someone inform Ivan Bergasek that that he, happens? I, I, I don't know. Okay. Uh, all I know is it's, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, wait, 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 she, Trumbull? Uh, Deb. What? Deb. Yes, Deb's mm -hmm. husband, I hate to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He, 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 he attends all the meetings. He's, a, he's an expert in you know, clean water and other issues. So, no, 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 I'm not saying, saying this. Sounds okay. like I but more importantly, but more importantly I'm, I'm just curious if you heard anything at the meeting about what the Economic Development Committee can do or has suggestions that would contribute to the revitalizing the common from an economic point of view. That is, reaching out to enterprises, businesses, necessary to basically to let people know at the very least what's going on or what could go on. So from my vantage point in my moccasins, which is all I have to share, I said uh, Northern Bank's ready to do something and we darn well better have form-based code together before they do or it's going to be the old rules built before our new rules come into place. Okay. All right. I have some news for you on that front too that will help you All right. and actually affirm your hopes. Good. Is there, but, but in other words, nothing was said about what that committee would do or wants to do. It's okay to say yes or no because part, part of the, our function is to push and shove. Who is represented on that uh, economic development committee? You said you mentioned, is that the mention with, with the two selectmen or is that the other meeting with two selectmen? Like that was a meeting with the two uh -huh. So did, did the selectmen uh, wax enthusiastic about trying to get economic development going anywhere in town? Uh, yes, and this was also prior to the uh, train station charrette meeting, so that was talked about as well. Mm -hmm. That's an area of town that hasn't seen anything of attention for 40 or 50 years. At least, so. yes, maybe longer. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. some of those buildings... <coughs> a little more recent than that, maybe 30. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. Uh, so there was that. Okay. So it was affordable housing, it was the sewer, it was the train station, and it was the talk of the um, multi-use as being part of the common revitalization yes. of base code. So that was the discussion so far as specifics of who they're going to call and when to get business going, I have nothing to report. No. Nothing. Okay. All right. Okay. So now we know we have some homework for, for them and for us. Okay. Uh, I want to use this opportunity to bring you up to date very quickly that um, Northern Bank has taken the next step in their 
conceptualization about what they want to do in the extensive piece of property that they own in the common. Mm -hmm. And although it's not ready for what we'll call public display or discussion because they just very preliminary, uh, I can tell you this, that it reflects rather sharply and <laughs> beautifully with what's, what's in our roadmap. Good. Okay. So, detail, the, you know, the devil's in the detail, how it ends up, but they're off to a roaring start mm -hmm. to do it. Now, when they get ready to do an official showing, show and tell, it could be through the planning board, it could be any number of things. But yeah. I just want to say that they're being very, very good Mm -hmm. Folks, with they're looking out for the town as well as themselves. Good, wonderful. Right? <clears throat> so it's not it's not a let's build a strip mall. Right. Okay, that's very good to hear. Uh, okay. Do you have any sense? Of, I mean, can you tell us more about it? What they, what no. their plans are? Nope. You no. can't tell because you it's don't know it because it's, it's embargo. It's, it's, it's embargo. Okay. It's not fair to them. It's yeah. it's private property. It's their thing. Sure. I'm just I'm telling you that they're being uh, uh, they're, they're listening to the town. Okay. So that's, that's great. That's great to hear. That's this is a uh, an important point. Okay. Um, all right. So before we get to liaison assignments and all the rest, just want to get through the uh, the, uh, the rest of it. There is also a lot of discussion going on, which is reflected also in certain um, warrant items having to do with <coughs> putting basically creating a. Um, a set aside for a senior a senior center mm -hmm. that's in the warrant. So there is, and and the amount of money that's being earmarked for this, or the amount of money somewhere in the three million area, there is an addition. Just I'm sure all of you have seen it. There is in fact a uh, I forget which it comes right after the establishment of the. Stabilization is called a stabilization fund. I think for the senior center, there's a a a, a, a resident uh, petition to very specific for purchasing a particular building on Great Road to do that, mm -hmm. and the town council has not yet res responded whether or not such a an item can be so specific about a specific piece of private property in the common to say we we won't buy that. Hmm. So, but those are the developments there. Okay. okay. The second thing which I'm just going to bring up, just as a matter of record, is that in the master plan itself, the master plans, and during the period that the master plan was developed, all right, so it's been two years, uh, the town was interested in something called a multi-generational community center. Yeah. All right. What's being discussed here is something called a senior center. I just want everyone to be alert to that. I'm not suggesting that that, that means a senior center is a bad idea. It is mm -hmm. a public building, so I'm making the assumption, and I just want to get discussion of whether or not this assumption is misplaced, that if there's public money goes in, that just like the fire, the, the new fire headquarters, the police department, and every other publicly funded building in this town, it is made available for town use with priority given to what the function of the building should be. Is there any, is there, have you run into anything? That I know on? that in a couple of meetings that I've been at when the idea of a community center has been floated, uh, citizens that are advocating specifically for the senior center are adamant that that's not something they would support because the stories they've heard of other communities attempting to do that, their point of view is, is that the seniors get short shrift, from, at least from their perspective. Sure. Um, my personal opinion about it is, is that it's very early in the process and a lot can change and happen as we go, move through this process. I would agree with your, the point you were making, Mike, that it's a public building funded by public dollars that even if its primary role is a senior center, there's no reason why we wouldn't expect access by the community for, even if it wasn't a explicitly listed as a, as a uh, community center, that there would be meeting space and, and opportunities that, that, and things that's like all that. I was, yeah. And that's got to get worked out. Like, I don't think there's any way that you could preclude just as 
I mean, I, I don't think there's any way the town could preclude the any building from if the if the board of selectmen authorize the use of it, then that's yeah. then it's a done deal. I yeah. mean, they're the yeah. they're in charge of it. The school if the school department authorizes the use of our buildings, yeah. you know, the people can't say you can't do that. You can't. You know, there's a law. They can't pass a town ordinance that says you can't use the school buildings for other reasons besides school. I, I don't think that would fly. No. Legally, like even if, you, if even that was your intent, and, now and your intent could be that, and you can you can manage your buildings as you see fit as a community. But I think that there would be an ebb and flow to it, based on who is yeah, sure. administering, you know, all of our buildings. But, but I just want you folks to be aware of mm, of this yeah. because it's it's not that we have to say you know strict to the language of the master plan and have all the words there, but basically I just want to make sure that we're aware that we're. This was a. This is going to be a public building, a publicly funded building, and that's that's yep. where. Call the senior center. Call the senior center, and, and I think Mike's point is well taken. A lot can change between now, mm -hmm. because at the moment there is no location specific. Right. It's all, I think it's entire preliminary. To worry yeah, it's, about it's, 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 isn't the isn't the petition location specific? Yes, and that's yeah. That, oh, well, you said that's. So you said the county council isn't sure, sure that, that we can yeah, actually, that, that we can actually do that. Do that and is, and. No. Is that unrelated to the, the parties that want the multi generational versus the senior center? Is that even, going to be brought I think up? Right or? now, I think right now the focus on the part of the folks who are advocating for a, a much needed facility, better than this one. Yes. For the seniors, which are yeah. necessary. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think it's gotten down to the nitty gritty about you know can we use it. <laughs> mm -hmm. It has to do with we, we need we need a, a center yeah. where the seniors needs. And by the way, there's also a bunch of other needs that go along with this, uh, like van drivers and stuff like well, that. Well, <laughs> also there's there are other human services that go yeah. on in conjunction with yeah. that area of the building here. Yeah, which would also so it's it covers a pretty wide swaths of services in, in this town so there's a lot to be mm -hmm. to be looked at in the future okay okay I'm sorry Ellie, do you want to talk about this Michael or maybe not I mean it seems to me in, you know in some ways it's hard to sort of know whether we should like this sort of thing or not in one sense I mean it violates sort of the principles of planning because you know, nobody sort of said, well, we ought to have a senior center here, maybe we ought to have it there, you know, nobody sort of looked at those kind of broader issues. On the other hand, you have a building that's available, maybe that's the way to, that's the way to yeah. do it. Uh, I, I don't think at this point that the issue about that building or another site is anywhere near to, to a conclusion. So, so I mean, it's, it's... Even if we vote in favor of the... The it, thing it, at town meeting. If it if it goes to town meeting, I have no idea what town meeting would vote for. So the, there's two article. One art. The one article that I think, from our perspective as the implementation committee, sure. that we need to be thinking about is just the fact that there there's the potential to establish a stabilization fund to put aside funding for a senior center. Yeah. And that's all we should be worried about. That's correct. The building on the common that might be a potential solution that is so preliminary to even, we don't even know that they would sell it to the town, <laughs> right? And if they right. wouldn't sell it to the town, then we can forget about determining if it's actually appropriate for a senior center. Mm -hmm. There's so much that has to happen. I, I don't want to, I'm not worrying about it. I'm, not. I'm supportive of the idea of setting money aside in a stabilization fund because mm -hmm. that allows us to uh, manage our, our financial planning relative to that goal mm -hmm. oh, and, and still keep in mind what the other things that we need to do as a town, which aren't going to go away, whether or not we do it or not build a senior center or, or fund a senior center. So I, that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. It's like the, the funding we should take a vote on. We, I, I'm supportive of that, put that stabilization fund in place. The rest of it, I'm not worried about yet because there's no real proposal. And, 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 the, and the, the idea that there's a citizen's article out there that hasn't even been approved by town council. Yeah, I, that, you know, that's why I'm mentioning it to you. Because right. the only thing that's really solid for us to, to take a position, if any, is on the stabilization fund, which, mm -hmm. as Mike pointed out, simply mm -hmm. says, yeah. you know, when, when a decision is made about location and all the rest, and mm -hmm. we're a long way from that, we will at least have a financial preparation. I mean, I agree that I think we should be prepared to weigh in on the debate about 
what's the balance if we get to the point where we're actually planning on developing a senior center and putting one in place what's the balance of it as a senior center and other town requirements that, that we have for space needs yeah we should weigh in on that because it's part of the, it's specifically in there, but in the master plan. It is very but different, yeah. I don't think that the time is not nigh at all. Nope, you know, that's, we're not it's close. down the road. We're yeah. down the close. In fact, they're still working on what to do with this building should anything happen. Right. So yeah. we're, we're pretty far away from it. It's another yeah. end number of dollars. And, you know, the library is going to come into this. Mm -hmm. You know, what part of the library becomes a community center? Yeah. You know, what's the potential for that? And the answers to that might go a long way towards assuaging concerns or, det or, may or determining the direction that a senior center sure. takes. So mm -hmm. I, there's a lot of moving pieces, and I don't think we need to be, you know, no. sweating the details at this point in time. Nope. Nothing here. Just wanted to alert you folks. That's all okay. I was doing. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. Um, before, okay. I'm just going to go back in time a little bit. Uh, Mainly, okay, We're good. Uh, I'm just going to pass this out. We're going back in time. Uh, Form-based code, just so that you know. Yep. I mean, we've been in this for a while. Uh, the, the planning board, of course, has taken over as is appropriate mm -hmm. uh, for yeah. um, for putting basically, shall we say, implementing form-based code. And uh, I believe Anna is going to Anna Houston is going to basically help. So I say mm -hmm. push that along, and she's holding a teach-in, um, and the notice that she's put together, these will be the subject matters. What I'd like our group to do is to make sure, and everyone you know that you publicize it, I'll make sure it gets distributed as well. Uh, and the reason this is important, uh, because it's important that we also make sure that if you know folks who own property in the common, um, you make them aware. Now, I can tell you from experience, having started this process, just to let you know, that the first question people ask who own property in the common, they want to know whether or not, will, will the sewer thing pass? That's the first question, <laughs> even before you get to the topic at hand. Yeah. And you, you basically have to say, it sure looks that way, but if it does, you need to be prepared. And here's, there are going to be zoning changes that have to go with it, so because land use changes. Yep. And I've test run this now on two of the other larger property owners, and it works pretty well. They do understand this. I'm having Marin uh, send out uh, copies of this to, to other folks who own property tonight. So I just wanted to let you know that's, that's in the works. Okay? Okay. 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 Will we learn something at this other than what we've already learned from the meetings with... Uh... Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this is, this is going to be far more... Uh, in detail than we've we've seen before because it's going to be about here. I'm not going to be able to go, but I'll be in the the center of form based code because I'll be in Las Vegas yes. at that time, which <laughs> is right. That's a perfect example of that's form based code all the way down, uh, up and down. I can forget, thank God I forgot the number of street and uh, the name of the only streets. kid. That's the okay, no, antithesis of form based code. Okay, so just to remind you, form based code. Uh, is is designed so that it it doesn't de-emphasize use it says it doesn't matter what you're using for this is the look and feel we want for this particular part of town mm -hmm. or a community mm -hmm. and since we're trying to create a neighborhood of the common mm -hmm. it's important that we have some rules regarding appearance mm -hmm. and materials used so that's yeah. what form-based code allows you to do yeah okay um let me see here uh, okay we're doing pretty well here okay um the the other topic I want to just give you is is very quickly. Um, I did make a presentation. It seems like years ago to the, both the planning board and the board of selectmen uh, about the um, basically about the the roadmap. Mm -hmm. And I detected very quickly at least two members. One member in particular of the board of selectmen didn't understand a what our committee was about and b didn't fully grasp what the roadmap was about, which is basically repeating what's in the master plan except providing a schedule and an economic base for it. Uh, uh, it I can now report understanding is, is far more complete. Okay. okay? So we're, 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 all, we're also on that. All right. Um, so what I'd like to do now is we, we can decide. How we, the other thing I want to let you know is under number six. Um, uh, I, 
I requested on our behalf, on number six, from the town, a sum of $12,000 for the, for, to, to carry out, I, I don't want to call it a study, I want to call it a planning effort, or an effort, to start addressing, not start, but to address the issue of developed land versus undeveloped land mm -hmm. in the town. Because we have no systematic way of addressing either one of these. It's either we're concerned about development too much mm -hmm. and or concerned about we need more open space mm -hmm. as much as possible. And there's very little conversation and the conversation is not based on anything more than whatever you want, we don't want. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. simplifying it, yeah. but it's, it's, it's an end. Okay. Every town has this. Mm -hmm. Littleton can't afford to keep doing this because we don't have that much space. Although something on the order of 68% of our space is open, not all of it is buildable, and not all of it necessarily is accessible, and a great deal of it is private. Mm -hmm. And we can't always control what an owner wants to do with their land. It's not our business. Mm -hmm. okay? But we don't have something thought out that allows us to look at these. It turns out, however, there are over seven to eight studies that have been done, sponsored by the state, in conjunction with the town, where I would say very over a million plus dollars over the years have been spent doing these studies, including the Carter, including open space, including uh, housing inventories, including the whole nine yards. And they've never been brought together in a, in a place where, shall we say, the folks who are very interested in development or more interested in development and those who are interested in open space can sit down and realize where they cro where, where where they have shared mm -hmm. because each of them comes at a cost if you do one it's going to cost you if you do the other it's going to cost you mm -hmm. so uh we don't need more outside consultants to do this so the form of this and it's going to be carried out um uh with, with the planning boards basically the planning board is, is going to direct someone else to do this it's going to be said andrew san marco is going to take his group that does uh, concentrates on uh, on open space, and he also was a, a big participant in some of the earlier studies. And to the extent that he can do it, he'll start over the next year or two beginning to bring these folks together. Oh, wow. Now, uh -huh. just so that you know, they're already in the books. There is in the archives already existing plans, which I can best describe is Littleton's version of the emerald necklace. Huh. Which surprised me because oh, it's not a necklace, it's basically a cross yeah. huh. that basically knits together open space and developed space in a systematic way across town. Now, whether or not it can be realized is another issue, but it's a starting point for them. Mm -hmm. So I just want to let you know that's what you'll see in one of the warrant items. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and it's been supported by the Board of Selectmen and the FIDCOM. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Great. okay. Great. Um, and in view of all the large items that have come up, and now we get to the part where our role, uh, and therefore liaison, our role I perceive is changing. Now it's now 20 of 8, um, and I want to make sure that, that we have an interest here in pursuing this, because most of the, shall we say, e the easy stuff, the hard stuff is over, now the really hard stuff comes, uh -huh. if you want to do it. Uh, I want to just put forward the, the notion that, that when you look at, that's why I asked Marin to send you all the material that we have so far. Yeah. Not only is not only are our seven original items being addressed, all at various stages of development, but there, shall we say, there's a fair amount of, shall we say, motion. Nothing is sitting exactly still, with few exceptions. Mm -hmm. So, the question is, what do we do while these items are going forward? Clearly, if we start on something new, it's going to be done as we're, well, the town has devoted its resources over quite a number of years to, shall we say, heavy lifting tasks mm -hmm. that both are in terms of personnel, in terms of funds, put a lot of, shall we say, demands on the town. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, and I think Mike and provide some counsel along these lines, this is a great time to start some new initiatives. I, I would agree with that. 
Um, but you I also, you're not sure that it is? I'm not sure it's a good time. I just want to make sure. Not, I but, make sure. but I, you know, I think that the, there's an inherent tension with the master plan and with the implementation committee and the risk of failure with master plans is in that uh, ten inherent tension. If we acknowledge that, okay, we're going to take a break, we can't forget to circle back. And how do you, from a process perspective, ensure that you've made an explicit decision to slow down a little bit, but also guarantee that it's going to, you're, you're going to reevaluate at the appropriate time to say, okay, now's the time to ramp back up again. Okay. And my thought is, you know, we have a very thick policy manual at the, on the school committee, and, and one of our charges is to make sure that that's up to date. So we have a, uh, Daryl Baker was the one who pioneered it for us. We have a very deliberate process where we go through it. It's, a, it's an ongoing circular process where we constantly revisit sections of the policy manual and we update it. And the update might be reviewed, no changes, reviewed, no changes. But the date's written down when it was reviewed and no changes recommended. So and it, it's right in, the, in that policy manual. So anybody wants to know, well, when's the last time you guys talked about the dress code? You just go to the dress code and you say, oh, whoa, geez, wow, just last year. Okay, I guess we don't really need to worry about that right now. That was fairly recently revisited. Mm -hmm. Versus when's the last time you talked about uh, how we, you know, uh, address bullying? Wow, that was four, four years ago. What's the, you know, that shouldn't happen. And by virtue of having this process, we know that there are no gaps anymore. There used to be. There were significant gaps. But now there are no longer gaps. And as long as we keep churning through that, we feel like we're in pretty good shape. I would be advocating that in a, in a very broad outline that if we could come up with some kind of process like that, Whereas at our regular meetings, we know we've gone through and we've kept track of what mm -hmm. we've we said. Uh, you know, on this date, we decided, no, we're not moving on this one. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to, we can say why or why not. It depends how we want to go about it. But at least then we have some assurance for ourselves and to the community at large that we haven't been doing much, but we know why. And, and we're not forgetting that, you know, it's, we need to reevaluate as we go through it. Yeah, my, my suggestion was somewhat along the lines I, I was going to be a little bit more explicit. That's why I wanted to, to, mm -hmm. to make sure we got at least some airing of this. And that is that I think it falls on us as providing guidance and um, promotion that we actually assess how much progress is being made on these various, I'll call them the big seven, and they all have moving parts in them as well. Mm -hmm. So to be fair, I wanted to make sure that we undertook almost, I would have to say it's very similar, if not identical, to what's being suggested. Number one is that we at least try, <clears throat> try to come to grips with what is meant in each of these seven items. What do we mean by progress? progress yeah. How are those projects moving? Even though we are not directly responsible nor empowered to make them happen, mm -hmm. I have no difficulty uh, in, in, in pushing at the appropriate committees, especially the Board of Selectmen and, and or the Planning Board or EDC or anyone else yeah. saying this just isn't happening and we expect this, this has got to happen in order. Mm -hmm. Now, it's very easy to say this, but establishing what constitutes progress I think is something that we're going to have to come to grips with. Yeah. All right? That's the first thing. <coughs> the second, <clears throat> not just focus on what is meant by these seven things, but also communicate to the, the one thing we can do is we can communicate to the community at large what is going on with the implementation. Even if it's twice a month in the newspaper or once a month in the newspaper mm -hmm. or flyers sent out to simply updates on implementation. Mm -hmm. So the two things I want to do is first of all, get it straight what, how do we walk into the, what do we walk into the Board of Selectmen or the Sewering Task Force and say, you know, this was supposed to be done by now, it's not, the money's been allocated, what's holding it up? I can't argue with them, they don't have the money, okay? Yeah. We can help, what, how much progress is being made on raising the money for it, that's, we can certainly do that. But I think the first task, and I'm seeking wider wisdom here, is to come up with 
shall we say, measures of progress for each of the seven items. Because okay. I'm not sure they're, all, they're not all the same. They all have different timelines, different be. requirements. Mm -hmm. Some of them were the low-hanging fruits, and some of them were the enormous uh, well, it turns out, projects. In fact, other than the, 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 the senior, the, the, the basically targeted senior housing, which has nothing to do with housing trust, but has to do with change, making it possible for, to get senior housing built in the town, is still a work in progress. Still struggling with it. And that's, that's a very, very hard one to, how do you measure? Oh, did someone build something? Does it work? Does it not work? Lessons learned? Mm -hmm. So there's a fair amount of, of, shall we say, stuff in each one of these. Yeah. The second thing is the communication of what how things are going. Yeah, like a tickler system, sort of like what Mike was talking about, like a way to um, flag it like every three months or something for us to circle back and check in. Yes, but and, and the, the, the communication part is, I, th I think part of what we do when we have what is progress yeah. is the circle back, but then it's communicating with the public to mm -hmm. let them know. To keep the motion going? Yes, mm -hmm. this is going on because like, Tonight, you know, you can see the vast public sea here we've got. <laughs> so, the, the, I'd like to put the two things together. Does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I, I, the other thing I would say is it's important because this committee is going to change, the makeup of this committee is going to change, and the makeup of all the other boards that we dialogue with and communicate with is going to change over the years that the town attempts to do the best job they can in implementing the master plan. So. It's important to get a process in place that we can then pass on and hope that by virtue of having a process that the next, as the members transition, they just grab onto it and keep rolling with it. I mean, they can improve it, they can modify it, but, you know, otherwise I worry that you know, the master plan will become like so many other master plans, just a dusty document that's, sitting on somebody's yeah. back shelf. That, that's the feedback I've gotten from a lot of folks who are involved in this for other towns. I've made it my business to talk to them yeah. <clears throat> and hear their stories, but yeah. <clears throat> and, and I believe that these two things here, mm -hmm. deciding what we mean, even if we don't broadcast what we're using as our criteria, right. at least if we're consistent internally about how we approach this, mm -hmm. that at least we'll be taken seriously there. And the second thing, as I said, is to find as many ways to broadcast it, including flyers, yeah. to keep people abreast. In this connection, I just want to mention one item that concerns me. It's not in the master plan. And that is that the importance of the town making a greater, a greater effort to increase the revenue flow in town because <clears throat> the point can't be the only point. <laughs> and, uh, we don't have to take it up tonight, but I, it's a topic that I think we, uh, I'm, I'm going to seek your wisdom on what, on what pathway we should follow, if any, to bring it to the attention, not just of the Economic Development Committee, but uh, I do know other committees are aware of it, but for reasons that Mike has already mentioned, there are changes always in these committees, elected committees and not. It's very difficult to get a sustained effort going, especially for this. So, uh, is there interest in pursuing this none on the master plan item? Eventually, I like. I think focusing on the seven items and coming up with this process should be the first goal before we take on something new. But then, yeah, I think once we get okay. that going, that, okay, yeah. because the the issue of revenue is going to, is, is is coming up. Don't you think though that that's going to be a result of the master plan being implemented? I feel like that's going to, if we have a form-based code, if we have new development where we want development the way we want it developed, I feel like that, and then and we have a sewer system, mm -hmm. I feel like that's going to allow for new, smaller um, business growth. The, 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 it can increase yeah. revenue, or are you thinking about revenue some other way? Other no, no, I'm... I'm Along the lines, there's the two generic approaches. This is, we're going to get into it in the least, yeah. <clears throat> not my intent. You're describing something called organic development, yeah. which is you, you, create an, you create an incubator mm -hmm. situation, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then people, you, you surmise that people will show up. 
Mm -hmm. The other way is much more proact is proactive, and they're not necessarily mutually exclusive. Mm -hmm. There are towns that make it their business to go to uh, business business shows and events that go on in Boston and New York and elsewhere, literally. Mm -hmm. They have a booth, they sit there with little brochures, <clears throat> this is Oshkosh, <clears throat> we have this much, we have this, why don't you come and visit us? Yeah. They make contact with folks who <clears throat> provide advice to firms that are looking to move. Here's where we are, here's what we have with space, these are our resources. Mm -hmm. Now, this to me is not the job of the mass, this is not the job of an implementation committee. This is the job for the Economic Development Committee and the Board mm -hmm. of Select. Mm -hmm. And I've been waiting for them to understand this. Yeah. So it's a big it's a big leap, I think, to what is? To take that step to do things like that when we haven't done it ever. Okay. Well Yeah, it doesn't seem that hard to if that if it's like going to a to a, a big city and sitting in a booth. Well, you have to prepare for it. You have yeah. to have to have stuff that you. I mean. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like I've done that kind of thing for my own business. I feel like you could do it. At, think of the town as the business and do it for the town. So. That resonates. I figured. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, I don't do you have any that, views on that? Yeah, I don't think that'd be hard. I do have done it. Uh, um, I guess I'm opening up my mind to the potential of this, but I am tending to think that it would fall more to Board of Selectmen and Economic Development Committee, as you say. And if they don't have the right people in place, then we may have to get to some sort of delegation or something mm -hmm. of how to get this done. But it does sound like uh, a proactive path would be more likely to produce results sooner than later. Can I have your okay? I mean, I'm I'm hot. I'm eager to do this because it's a long slog. Just doing one whack at stuff, but it's going to take 15 or 20 whacks to get it going. Yeah. If you if you folks like the idea, mm -hmm. it's a committee decision, not mine. Uh, I'd be more than happy when I have my first or second meeting with the new town admin, and more than likely I'll be accompanied by mm -hmm. several selectmen. So I'll be selling this to more than one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, as a business person, I, from that perspective, I absolutely support it, thinking of it as a way to generate revenue. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Absolutely. John? Um, certainly, I think it's a great idea. I, you know, let's see if it... Well, I, I'm talking yeah. specifically about, you know, pushing the... Because yeah. it, it's, this is a top-down one as well as a bottom-up one. Yeah. So, uh, and the next time you visit the EDC, you may want to also provide that to them. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. And see just if you get a response or hand waving or, well, the Board of Selectmen didn't tell us to do that, which is, you know, mm -hmm. another. Okay. Very good. All right. Um, I think we've covered a lot of this ground here. Um, so I think we've reached the point now where we could do uh, um, member input. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I'm, I, I don't really have a lot to, of input other than I'm so happy to just kind of see things moving. The motion is makes me very happy to, to see that happening because I feel like, I don't know, I like I got involved in 2010, which is coming up on nine years ago with the whole sewer committee and when that was first just being spoken, well, spoken about at that time and I just I like to see the I mean nine years is a long time but things are actually moving so yay <laughs> that's all I really have to Good. say that I'm happy to see and it's satisfying and it makes me feel happy to still be a part of the community and watch some of this stuff you know we're laying out thing um, a town that will be here for generations to come and as and the one thing I, I, I didn't go to um, Cindy Napoli's uh, presentation but I read the slides Good. and the one thing that really just kind of I love generational um, stuff on generations and the one that, thing that jumped out on me was that um, generation X which is what I am was like forgotten <laughs> because not and it's probably because we are the people that can afford to live here right now it, it's the younger people the Millennials and then the baby boomers who are aging 
that's where the focus was on that. And I'm like, well, what about the Generation X? I feel like we're always forgotten. But then when you look at the age, when you look at the data of like who's who can afford to live and buy a house and live and work, and who's the workforce right now, it's us. But we're a smaller generation. The Generation X is much smaller than both baby boomers and millennials. Um, and I just thought that was interesting. And in, in the small generation X people like us, like we are going to become seniors someday. And I'm definitely interested in a senior center, not just for our current seniors, but like the millennials and the generation Xs are all we're all moving that way, you know. So I don't know. It's just that's I just I happen to notice that, and I always feel like we're forgotten our generation. <laughs> so I have to speak up for the generation Xers. Are, are there enough of you when the time <laughs> comes to be noticed the way that? the current characters are? Are there enough of us to... Yeah, in other words, what, what, I forget from the slide, are, is Generation X a significant population? No, that, compared uh, to the millennials that are much bigger. So, yeah. It what is Generation X again? I, I well, can't always follow all these X, Y, and Z. Um, so, stuff, so, I was maybe. born, yeah, I was born in 73, and I'm like right in the middle. Like, did you say oh. 65 to 80? And then there's oh. X, X annuals, which are like from the eight, like 1980 to 93 are oh exennials. Really yeah. yeah, and then like 92, 93 are when the millennials to, you know, they're all in their, they're starting to gra graduate and get jobs right now and, and they're entering the workforce and they're looking for a place to live and they want to live in Littleton and they can't. And I have, I have millennials working for me that are trying to find housing right now for the first time in their lives and they have major student loans and they can't afford it and it's tough. So, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's definitely, it would be great to have that mix and, um, and we're all, we're all aging too, so. Some of us more than, there's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to age. I don't want, I don't want the alternative, so. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, would yeah. Uh, I'll pick up two threads of what we've been talking about. I guess I am encouraged to hear that Andrew Samarco is willing to pick up these past studies and pull them together. So if there is information that we have gathered on developed and undeveloped town land, yeah, I'm interested in that. I happen to be one of the owners of some of that land. So okay. interesting to hear what might happen if visions are aligned for open and development, so that is intriguing to me. Uh, the other is on town sewering, and uh, I will be interested, entertained, and involved by town meeting as that comes to pass, because even at the Economic Development Committee, it did not sound like this was a no-brainer and absolutely going to pass, so uh, without elaborating, it will be uh, revealed <laughs> in a few short weeks. Well, the, the, there's no money involved in the next few weeks. <clears throat> so people can pass things and do things. It's going to be the next one where, where the, where the yeah. borrowing, and it may even hit at the same time that other things yeah. and, mm -hmm. and intersect with it. So it, it yeah. could test people's metal. Yep. And um, uh, at our next meeting, we're going to take up the what ifs. Yeah. Good. So that we have a plan B in the event that something doesn't happen. Very good. Mm -hmm. Jonathan? Okay, well, first of all, a plug for the annual Patriots Day celebration at Liberty Square. Mm -hmm. Lyle is always there, but many of the rest of you probably don't e maybe don't even know where Liberty Square is. I know I didn't until I started going to those ce celebrations. So the Historical Commission will hold its annual celebration on uh, the real Patriots Day, April 19th, at Liberty Square at 7 o'clock, and I hope um, many of you can, can come, bring your families, and, and so on. Uh, more to the point of what we've been well, doing. Will you have another outstanding reenactment? Uh, we have interesting reenactments. We With have, or without ketchup? Uh, no ketchup. Okay. We, <laughs> not we have some, uh, we have the Boxborough Minutemen, where we bring in Andrew San Marco again, <laughs> who does everything. The exit light. Okay, uh, and uh, we, uh, we have all kinds of things. So it's, it's a fun thing. 
If it's not cold and rainy like it's been the last two times, it'll be great. Yep. Uh, on other things that we didn't talk about tonight, uh, and I don't know how you know what the sort of second day uh, result was, but I attended the very interesting uh, session uh, last Friday on the um, station area. Yeah, yeah. And I think there was a lot of uh, good uh, input there. Uh, again, I don't know. I, mean, I, I thought Marin would be here today, but yeah, she, guess, she's attending well, somebody else's needs. needs. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but anyway, I mean, there was. So, so I don't know. So they were going to draw, put the things together for some conclusions. I was just there when people were putting in all kind of ideas, somewhat the way it was done at the, you know, the master plan sure. uh, charrettes and and so on. I I thought uh, it was a lot of good uh, good talk about what what could be done in the area, what could be done in relation to transportation, roads, things like that. So I think there's a lot of possibilities there, and it certainly fits in with. You know, implementing master plan. Uh, oh yeah, it's ideas nice. certainly. Yeah. So I think we want to. I mean, hopefully that will continue on. And uh, I guess sort of we're dealing with the common, but that's you know sort of another center of fo focus in town, and where a lot could be could be done. So let's. I, mean, I, I trust we'll all be informed about what's yeah. what's going on. Right. Okay. Um, I've said enough for tonight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh -huh. Okay. Um, minutes. Uh, we don't. Have, we don't have the minutes because Marion couldn't make it tonight. She's helping out at the um, affordable housing trust. Um, and I will get the next meeting time to you, but it'll be probably a, a, about a month from today. Okay. So I'll make sure. Uh, hopefully, all of you can can make it then. Mm -hmm. So we'll tend to be before or after town meeting. I I suspect it's the town meeting is the what the twenty sixth the sixth I don't know it'll probably be after town meeting be and no town meeting is is it the sixth May sixth or yeah it's May sixth six, May sixth right? yeah. uh, what what is your yeah. purpose if we can get it in do you want to have one before town meeting. Um, I feel like we we touched upon yeah, yeah. a lot. I would of wait to see what have, what transpires. Yeah, because there's a lot of stuff okay. that we talk yes. about. Yes, agree. Yeah, I think I feel prepared for it now. Um, I think I'd rather talk after. Agree. Okay, I'll make sure we schedule it. Okay, I just want to make sure yeah. we're happy. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. If there are no further anything for discussion that we didn't do a good enough job on, I feel bad for the public. Uh, I can well, it's only an hour. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm glad that that was probably good for them to. They walked out. It's hard to talk. Anyway, <laughs> kept them out of trouble for an hour. Yeah. All right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Uh, could someone flip the switch? Thank you. Thank you, Michael.